Hi everyone, my name is Sylvia Perez and I'm an application engineer here at Hawkrid Systems. Today I'll be showing you some changes that have been placed inside Plastics 2014 that allows a user of any level of experience to be able to quickly navigate and set up a plastic analysis. In this example here, we have a plastic shovel part and we want to run a plastic analysis to see if the part can be filled. In 2014, SOLIDWORKS Plastic added a new function where you can set up a problem efficiently by doing a step-by-step -step process using Getting Started Wizard. If you're familiar with Simulation Express, Plastic uses the same concept where it uses the wizard to run through every step necessary to complete the setup for this plastic problem. So if I run through the steps here and select Next, you see that the first thing that I have to do is generate a mesh. My second step is in to add a material, add some process parameters, injection location, and then run the analysis. In this case, I'm just going to use a shell mesh. It takes me into the shell parameters here, and I just run through and adjust any settings that I need to. After it meshes the model, you see that now I have indicated here in the Getting Starting Wizard a green check. This is telling me now that this step has been completed and I can proceed to the next step. If I go to the next step here, I can change the material and we get pulled into our polymer window where we have a vast uh, database of different type of materials we can use. In this case, I'm just going to use a general ABS uh, material here. The next thing I'm going to do is select Next, and it takes us into the process parameters. This is where I can change any of the fill settings such as the injection pressure, the mold temperature, and any advanced settings here. In this case, we're going to leave everything by default. Last but not least, we're going to add the injection location. When I go into the add injection location, I can then select any point of my model where I see fit to add an injection point. And just like that, every step has been completed now where I can now proceed to the next step to run the analysis. In this case, we already have a study that's already been completed and run. Now that we ran and got our results, we're now into the results interface here. Another item that's new with the Plastics 2014 is this advisor. If I select this icon here, it gives us this result advisor window where the first thing we see is a straight light icon. And it's just a quick access toolbar to let us know that um, our model is able to fill or not. And then it goes into every result plot here and gives us a pretty good description of what these plots are and how we can actually uh, read into them and get a better understanding of what's going on with our injection mold project. With the results now available, Plastics 2014 offers a new functionality here to export your in-mold residual stresses into a simulation study. After I export those options there, I can go into our simulation study here, create a nonlinear study, and you see when I right-click on the external load, I have the option here to input in-mold residual stresses. I also want to point out that in this window, we also have this option here to include materials from SOLIDWORKS Plastics. What this does is it saves us time and avoids us to having to recreate a plastic material inside our simulation study where we can then import that material from plastics to simulation. In this video, we saw the new interface improvements made in Plastics 2014 and the new export functionality to help save time and get the most out of your injection molded design. Thanks for watching.